Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sorazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about the motion of charged particles within a magnetic field, everyone. And before we get going, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Before you watch this video, make sure you watch my previous video in which we proved the formula that the force on a single charged particle, F, is equal to BQV. Make sure you've watched it before watching this one, otherwise it just won't make sense. Okay, let's get straight into it. Okay, so right guys, I've drawn the following diagram. We've got a magnetic field going into the board here or into the page here. Cross equals uh, the magnetic field into the page. We're gonna right now, uh, we're gonna fire an electron. So here's my electron over here. We're gonna fire it in this direction over here. Okay, fantastic. We know that it's been fired, so that's its velocity in this direction. We already know that the force on this charged particle will be given by the following formula. The magnetic flux density times by the charge, times by the velocity. F is equal to BQV, where F is measured in Newtons, magnetic flux density is Tesla, Q will be in Coulombs, and the velocity is meters per second. Fantastic, over here. Right, so we now know that the charged particle is moving within the field. Um, which way would the force be on this electron? So if somebody asks you which way would the force be on the electron, well, you can use Fleming's left-hand rule to solve this. So, in Fleming's left-hand rule, if you've forgotten, it's FBI. F stands for the force, B stands for the magnetic flux density, and I stands for the current. These are the directions. Notice they are 90 degrees to each other. So, obviously, if I want to work out the force, I'm going to orientate my hand in terms of the magnetic flux density and the current directions. So, first of all, the field is going into the page, that's what I'm doing here. Make sure you try it yourself, your left hand, not the right hand. And which way is the current going? Well, this is a little bit tricky, but hopefully we can remember that we know that um, in conventional current electricity, if I have a positive terminal here, a negative terminal, the current goes from positive to negative. This is the direction of the current. But which way is the electron flow? Well, electrons are the negatively charged. So therefore, they can't move in this direction because they will be repelled away from the negative terminal. So the electron movement will be in the opposite direction to the current. So the electron movement will be in the opposite direction to the current. So over here, it will be moving backwards. This is my current direction over here. So now look, now I can use Fleming's left hand rule to determine which way the force will be. So we know the field into the page, current backwards, Therefore, the force on this charged particle is going to be, what? Downwards, everyone, yes? So the force is down here. I'm going to put it in blacks here. So my force is down over here. That's the force on this charged particle. Therefore, the particle starts to move along this line over here. So the particle then starts to move here. There we go. So initially it's moving straight, then it starts to move round. Okay, right, we're going to do the same thing again now, everyone and then we're going to see which way is the force on this particle again. So we're going to draw the same things again. I'm just going to erase the velocity of the initially. There we go. And we're going to draw the particle at this point here. So now, don't forget, uh, the velocity is downwards over here. That's my velocity. Yes. And once again, if this is the direction of the movement of the electron, which way is the current? I'm just erasing this one as well to make it easier for us to see. We can see that the current direction is upwards again. Now, if you do Fleming's left-hand rule one more time, so now we've got the velocity going down, current going up, so field into the board, current upwards, we can see that the force will be to the left. There we go. So the particle then turns again over here. Excellent stuff. So we now that there is a force acting on this charged particle, but look, guys, it will cause the particle to move in what type of motion, everyone? circular motion. So the key thing to take home from this, what I was trying to explain, is that charged particles within magnetic fields exhibit circular motion. There we go guys, charged particles moving within a magnetic field exhibit circular motion guys. Fantastic stuff. So don't forget that topic of circular motion is now making an appearance in the topic of magnetism. Because look, we can see that force is to the center of this circle over here. And don't forget, the magnitude of that force will be given by F is equal to BQV. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so what about positive and negatively charged particles? Let's look at them in a bit more detail. Okay, so positively charged particles versus negatively charged ones. So we already did an electron a second ago. So let's just say the velocity is over here 
and it's an electron. Number one, we know that we can quickly do this. We just did it a second ago over there. The current is in the opposite direction because it's a negatively charged particle. And therefore, the force is going to be downwards over here. So the force is going to be downwards. Therefore, this particle will move in this direction over here. There we go. Assuming that the magnetic field is into the page. Okay, so, all right, what about a positively charged particle? Let's say we have an alpha particle. Yes, here's my alpha particle, and obviously it's plus two charge. Let's say it's fired in this direction. That's my velocity, yes, the alpha particle. Which way is the force on this charged particle? Right, so, don't forget, the first thing to do identify is which way is the current. Well, if for a negatively charged particle, the current is in the opposite direction to the motion of the particle. So, look, for the negative electron, velocity is here, current in this direction. But because the particle is positive, we know that the current will be in the same direction as the motion. So this will be the current. It will be in the same direction as the motion over here. And then, now we've got the current, we can use Fleming's left-hand rule one more time to work out which way is the force on this charged particle. So we know that uh, field goes into the board, current in this direction, the force is upwards. So yes, my force in this case will be going upwards. So therefore, this particle was moving here, being dragged with a force upwards. This particle will therefore move in this direction. There we go. To summarise, guys, make sure you know that positively charged particles move in one direction, negatively charged particles move in the opposite direction here. But you have to check your diagrams, especially with the field. They might try and trick you and put the field going out of the board. Obviously, it will reverse the whole thing. You have to use Fleming's left hand rule yourself. Right, now, from here, everyone, here, let's test our understanding. Okay, so let's say we're given the following diagram here, positively or negatively charged particle. So we've got this diagram right now, uh, and we have the following. Let's say they say to you, oh, well, is it a positively charged particle or a negatively charged particle? Which one is which? The first thing I tell you to do is the following. Just pick a point over here, and then just draw the velocity on there. So draw it off as a tangent to the circle. So look, I'll pick it off, let's just say, we pick it off over here. We draw the tangent to the circle, the velocity there, okay? Uh, so we know that's moving in this direction. We identify the force. The centripetal force is always to the center of the circle. There we go. Okay, and then all we're going to do from here is we're going to use the left-hand rule. We know the force is downwards, field into the board. We can identify that the current is in the opposite direction here. So now we can know that the current is in the opposite direction. And clearly, if the current is in the opposite direction to the motion of the particle, Therefore, what does that mean? We therefore know that it's negatively charged. So it's negatively charged. That's the simple check over here. What about the next one? So let's say we have this one over here. We can do it again. So you just pick a point uh, and then you draw it off the velocity here. There we go. That's my velocity. We know the force is to the center of the circle. Yes, the force is the center of the circle because the charged particle will exhibit circular motion. Then we can work out the direction of the current. So Fleming's left hand rule, field into the page, uh, force to the right. We know that the current is in this, this direction over here. There we go. And you know that as the velocity is in the same direction as the current, therefore it's a positively charged particle. So it's positively charged over here. This is a very quick way to work out if the path is of a positively charged particle or a negatively charged particle. It's a very simple method. Right, the next thing we're going to consider is the radius of the path of a charged particle within a magnetic field. So let's say we know that if you fire the particle into a magnetic field, we know that, let's say it's an electron, we'll just draw it over here, I'm drawing it very quickly, we know it will exhibit circular motion, we know it will go round, we know it will go all the way around. If we want to look at the radius of this, let's say the radius over here, the radius r, how are we going to actually get an expression for the radius of the circle? Well, we can look at the following. We know that the force on this charged particle, don't forget, is towards the centre. The force is always towards the centre of the circle over here. Well, we know that the force on the charged particle within a magnetic field will be equal to the force keeping it moving in a circle. So there we go, guys. The force due to the magnetic field will be equal to the force due to circular motion, everyone. So everyone, I've put it down in a simple format. The force due to the magnetic field is equal to the centripetal force, guys. So that is a key bit of the learning, everyone. So we're going to be combining two different concepts together. The force due to the magnetic field, we can work that out. That's going to be equal to BQV. So we did that previously. F is equal to BQV. We can put that down over here. So it's going to be equal to BQV. The force due to centripetal motion is going to be what? 
Hopefully we can remember that the force due to centripetal motion is going to be m v squared divided by r. So it's equal to m v squared divided by r over here. And now, look, guys, we can get an expression for the value of r. So we can rearrange this. We know that r it will be equal to m v squared divided by b q v. And therefore, you know that uh, the v's cancel out uh, from top and then... Sorry, and then one of the v's cancels out uh, from here, so that ends up with r is equal to mv divided by bq, everyone. So the radius, guys, is equal to mv divided by bq, where m is the mass of the particle in question in kilograms, v is the velocity of the particle in meters per second, b is the magnetic flux density in tesla, and q is the charge in coulombs, everyone. So that's going to be the value of the radius over here. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so moving on from here, what about the time period? So time taken for that particle to make one complete oscillation. What would be the time period? Right, so let's say we're asked about the time period for you to make one loop. What would be the time taken to make one loop? Well, we already know that R is equal to MV divided by BQ. We're going to try and get an expression for the time period into here. Hopefully, from circular motion, there are a couple of equations you should be familiar with. F will be equal to mv squared divided by r. Yes, we also know that omega is equal to 2 pi over t. And we also know that v is equal to omega r. And we also know that v is equal to 2 pi r divided by t over here. Right, if I want the time period, the one that's ringing a bell with me is because I'm not going to add the omega 1. I'm going to try and use this one over here. So let's plug in V uh, over here. So we know that R will be equal to M, and we can substitute that all in, and then over BQ, and then the value of V is 2 pi R divided by T over here. There we go. And then R, R cancels out from both sides, and I can move the T up. So don't forget, R will cancel out with this R. T will go up then t will be equal to 2 pi m divided by b q. Really interesting over here. So that's going to be the time period is equal to 2 pi m divided by b q. So really interesting is that the time period is independent of that radius here. So that radius we looked at earlier on doesn't really make a difference when we're looking at the time period. The time period is actually related to the mass, the magnetic flux density, and the charge we have. And what about the frequency? So let's say somebody asks you for the frequency of this. We know that frequency is equal to 1 divided by the time period. So therefore, we can just flip this. The frequency will be equal to BQ divided by 2 pi m over here. And that's going to be the value of the frequency over here. So we've got an expression for the time period, and we've got expression for the frequency as well. That's it for another session, guys. But the main thing to take away from this is that charged particles moving in magnetic fields exhibit circular motion. We equate the force due to the magnetic field with the centripetal force, and we can get expressions for the radius, the time period, and the frequency. And also, we can determine the path of the particles by checking out if it's a clockwise or anti-clockwise motion. And that's it for another session of Surrounds with Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to get my channel going and good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.